There are lots and lots of transformations in the shipping industry. You know that, especially with the new regulations within environmental requirements. The Swedish club uh, is a pioneer in providing comprehensive all-in-one insurance solutions and in proactive loss prevention. The club's most important mission in a world of increasing complexity in global trade is to assist in its members and clients in managing current and future risks for new and existing businesses. Please welcome Senior Technical Manager Peter Stålberg. Thank you. You work with loss prevention and business intelligence. And after that, we will hear Lorraine Hager. Welcome. Thank you much for the kind introduction. Can you hear me? Yes, because I can't hear myself really. Thank you. Uh, today, we'll take a peek into the crystal ball, trying to figure out what lies ahead for marine insurance and uh, loss prevention. I've been in the shipping industry for quite a number of years, and I think it's fair to say that development in shipping has been a little bit conservative compared with other industries. The introduction of new technology and innovation has generally been a little bit slow and moderate. But for the last few years, I think we can see a change. Uh, with sophisticated electronics and almost unlimited bandwidth, a single vessel on a long journey is suddenly online 24-7. And there are endless possibilities for onshore management to get closely involved and assist the crew with the daily operation. To some extent, remote control and autonomous shipping is already here. There are new possibilities, but also new challenges for operators and not the least for marine insurance. The introduction of autonomous ships and alternative green fuels to the maritime industry is about to open a new era, leading to a paradigm shift in terms of safety, security, and environmental protection. Everybody knows about this. The target is set and the pressure is on. Like most industries, shipping has committed to reduce the environmental impact, and specifically the total greenhouse gas emission with at least 50% until 2050. That is only 26 years from now, plenty of time it seems, but as per today, no one has the clear and definite solution to this target. Efficiency in ship design and trade will take us a long way, but to accomplish this goal, we have to introduce new green fuels. Several promising technologies and fuel alternatives are in the works to meet this goal, and I believe that the target can be met. As usually, when society, in this context, the shipping industry, comes together and focus on research and development, we can achieve great progress in a relatively short time. Unfortunately, this is not only a technical issue. So, what's the impact for marine insurance here? Firstly, we lack the experience and training for the crews. It will take a number of years to gain experience and educate a new generation of seafarers. Secondly, introduction of new technology will usually lead to some teething problems. We do expect a bump in the claims trends when we introduce new technology. However, the biggest concern is probably some of the new proposed fuels itself. The good old diesel oil, MDO, gas oil, heavy fuel oil, whatever you call it, it's been around for decades. It is comparatively harmless, and everyone in the industry knows how to handle it in connection with pollution and other out-of-the-ordinary events. <clears throat> Some of the new proposed fuels are very dangerous. Methanol is flammable. It's toxic and lethal. Ammonia is even worse, highly corrosive and gaseous. And hydrogen is explosive in a wide mixture. The consequence is that ordinary ships 
will carry dangerous cargo when bunkering these fuels. Imagine a ship with 100 tons of methanol or ammonia in the bunker tanks. She's being involved in a collision or grounding, and there are a number of questions arising for the marine insurers. Are salvers prepared to handle this? Will a port or refugee accept this vessel? Can a shipyard deal with this vessel? Most likely, events like this will increase exposure and cost for marine insurers, and it will take time until we learn from industry experience how to handle this. The green shift of shipping will also lead to introduction of new and novel technology. We have seen this consequence before in the shipping industry, and here are two recent examples. In 2014, there was the introduction of an environmentally acceptable lubricant for stern tubes. This was a requirement to call any port in the United States. When this was introduced, we in the marine insurance market, we could immediately see a shift in the claims trend. There was an increase of stern tube damages. And this shift has been steady since then. So here was the pre-2014 level, and then it shifted up to this level and it's still up in this level, so the exposure increased. There is also another example. In 2020, the very low sulfur fuels were introduced. Initially, we saw an increase in the marine insurance business of uh, cylinder liner damages. This was taken care of. There was a problem with the uh, lubrication of cylinder liners. They changed the design and type material of the, of the uh, uh, cylinder rings, liner rings and the crew learned to handle it, and the claims trend has fallen back and is now about the same as it was before the introduction of the low sulfur fuels. Finally, returning to the introduction with remote monitoring and control, autonomous shipping is already here, but in a, still, in a small scale. Perhaps it was easier to build an autonomous ship compared with a self-driving car. Autonomous shipping works two ways for marine insurers. It's a fact that the human factor is often the cause for accidents. So replacing the human factor with automation will most likely reduce the number of claims for insurance companies. This is good news for marine insurance. On the other hand, Autonomous technology is new technology, and as I showed in this previous slide, we can expect some teething problems here, and it will cause some failures and claims as well, at least initially when introduced. Then we have the question of liability. <clears throat> if an automatic ship runs aground and causes pollution, who is to blame? As there was no captain or crew on board, can we blame the makers of the technical system which failed? Where is the liability? And finally, with remote technology, new risks will open up and the genre for cyber attacks will increase. And this is also a concern for marine insurance. To conclude, there is a lot of positive development going on in the shipping industry right now. And the marine insurance is closely following developments and preparing for the future. We not only monitor technical development, but also actively support our members with advice and solutions to ensure they can run a safe and green operation also tomorrow. Thank you for your attention. I will now hand over to my colleague, uh, Lorraine Hager. Thank you, so much. Thank you so much, Peter. And it's great to be back here again at the Donso Shipping Meet. From autonomous shipping to alternative fuel fuels, Peter discussed the challenges that come with the future technological advancements within the maritime industry, bringing about new dimensions of risks and complexities. Before I proceed, let's consider a case study from our loss prevention training in this very short video. Vessel A, a 1000 TEU container vessel, was approaching the pilot station at 17 knots. It was afternoon and visibility was restricted to approximately 0.1 nautical miles due to fog. 
The master had the con and the second officer was monitoring. Two ARPA radars were used alternatively on ranges between 6, 3 and 1.5 nautical miles. The master saw a target on the radar and acquired it on the ARPA as Vessel B. It could be seen that if Vessel A maintained this course, it could hit Vessel B on the starboard side. Vessel A wanted to overtake Vessel B, so the master started the fog signal. 15 minutes before the collision, Vessel B was on a course heading 293 degrees, and the closest point of approach was 0.14 nautical miles. Both vessels kept their course, but two minutes before collision, Vessel B suddenly altered its course and the master on Vessel A realised that Vessel B was dangerously close and ordered hard to starboard and stop engines. It was too late to avoid the collision. Vessel A struck Vessel B on its starboard side about midships. The entire crew from Vessel B were rescued by Vessel A. So, the case study vividly illustrates the significance of well-trained crews in preventing and responding to collision incidents. The risk would be different, of course, if it was an autonomous vessel. If you see on the screen now, looking into the lessons learned from this case, it underscores the vital role of human judgment and decision-making. Decision Automation while enhancing efficiency that does not replace the human factor in maritime operations. Going back to our topic, loss prevention, preparing for the future. The quote, it wasn't raining when Noah built the ark, underscores the timeless wisdom of preparedness. In the maritime industry, as we prepare for the future with advancement in technology, changes in regulations, and the evolving landscape of global trade, training emerges as our vessel of readiness. It empowers us to face challenges before they become crises. And it enables us to navigate uncharted waters with competence and confidence. Like Noah's Ark, training becomes our vessel of survival and success in the midst of the ever-changing maritime environment. The maritime workforce of tomorrow will require diverse skills that set the span of traditional maritime expertise and cutting-edge technological competence. So we must invest in training and educational programs that promote our professionals to navigate this rapidly evolving landscape. At the Swedish Club, we continue to invest in providing loss prevention advice and training to our members. Some of our materials are re readily available on our website and these are free for our members and business partners and even some of them are free to everyone. These are just some of the examples of our initiatives and offerings at the Swedish Club. Take for example TELP or the Trade Enabling Loss Prevention. This is one ex excellent example on how we provide loss prevention information to our members. Collaboration is the wind in our sails. The challenges we face are too great for any single entity to tackle alone. So governments, shipping companies, port authorities, environmental organization, the academia must unite and share in a shared vision for the industry's future. Only through co collective efforts can we set global standards harmonize regulations, and foster innovations that benefits us all. We provide a venue to collaborate and discuss trends and future technological advancements through our webinars. So we have webinars that we conduct at the club, and we have invited experts such as Aeon Cyber Solutions, where we discuss cyber risks and how to prevent cyber attack. We even 
invited experts from Orca AI, which is a provider of automated platform and data-driven technology. And there, we discussed enhancing situational awareness through AI. And just recently this year, we have a back-to-back -back webinar um, where we invited RICE, or the Research Institutes of Sweden, experts from Stena Technique, Volkswagen Concern Logistique, and Balenius uh, Wilhelmsen. And they're also discussing the safe transport of electrical vehicles on board. So at the Swedish Club, we're providing this venue so we can openly discuss the future challenges in the maritime industry. And I would like to conclude our presentation with a quote from Captain Philip Svensson of Valenius Wilhelmsen. He actually said this during our webinar. And uh, he said, we should never compete on safety, but we can compete on quality, right? Anyone agrees to this code? As we prepare for the future amidst technological advancements, changing regulations, and the demands of a globalized world, this code stands as a guiding light. Our commitment to safety is non-negotiable. It is the bedrock upon which our industry's reputation, sustainability, and human lives are built. Safety is not a competitive edge. It is an inherent responsibility that transcends rivalry. rivalry. By adhering to the highest safety standards, by nurturing a culture of vigilance and preparedness, we uphold the sanctity of our maritime operations and the sanctity of those who entrust their lives to our care. In the midst of our pursuit of excellence, it is the quality of our operations that sets us apart. Quality encompasses not only the craftsmanship of our vessels, but also the expertise of our personnel, the precision of our processes, and the integrity of our decisions. It is a reflection of our commitment to continuous improvement, to anticipating challenges before they arise, and to ensure that every aspect of our industry is marked by excellence. As we embark on this journey into the future, let us carry the message of the code with us. Let us hold safety as a foundational principle and quality as our North Star. The maritime industry must heed the lesson of foresight and preparation. In this way, we can navigate the seas of change with integrity, responsibility, and united commitment to ensuring that every voyage, every operation, and every interaction exemplifies the highest standards of excellence. And I would like to challenge everyone. I would like to challenge all of you here to be like Noah. You remember the slide? He didn't build the ark when there was a storm. He built it before. And I think we need more Noahs in our industry. There is no one Noah. There's no one company that can save us or prepare us for the future. But let us all be a Noah. Don't you agree? And I can say that I myself feel like I'm also more of a NOAA working at the Loss Prevention Department, making a small contribution for the future of our next generation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you, Lorraine and Peter. Um, I, I think that this uh, collaboration and information sharing is something uh, like a red thread through all the speeches here today. Yeah. Um, uh, but what about this, uh, the, you know, the, you talk about the well-trained personnel. What, what role does well-trained personnel play uh, in, in preventing uh, accidents, for example? Thank you, Pernilla. Well, if we say well-trained personnel, they really play a crucial role in preventing accidents because they do it by identifying risks and making informed decisions and maintaining vigilance at the same time. Of course, they ensure compliance by adhering to regulations, following these established uh, procedures and 
effectively communicating and managing risks. And Peter, what, what, did, what do you think is the biggest challenge now uh, for marine insurers uh, in relation with a green shift in, in shipping? I think there are, there are like two things. One is the technical development, which I think is, I wouldn't say straightforward, but we can overcome that. Uh, looking here at the crowd here in Dunsa, I know the level of innovation here at Dunsa is very, very high and the quality is very high. So uh, I think that part we can handle, I wouldn't say easy, but we can handle it for marine insurance. Mm -hmm. Because in marine insurance, we want to have everything at steady state and predictable. I think the biggest challenge is actually that we, we have to introduce new fuels in the market. And as I mentioned before, some of these fuels, we are not used to handle them. Methanol and ammonia, <coughs> perhaps hydrogen as well. It's, uh, it's, it's very dangerous stuff. And uh, as long as the ship is in a normal operation, it should be okay. But um, if we have any, you know, bigger accidents, groundings, collisions, and, and uh, at a ship that carries 100 tons of ammonia on board, that is it's difficult to handle, and it's going to be costly to handle. And in the end, it's the insurance company, the insurance industry, who has to pay for that. Yes. So I think that's, that's one, of our, one of the bigger risks we see in the horizon from marine insurance. The Swedish Club is a gold sponsor this year to Dunsa Shipping Meet. As uh, always, I would say. Yes. No. <laughs> well, always, Almost. maybe. <laughs> uh, what, uh, what is your expectations for this, uh, uh, this year? I think uh, here at Dunsa, all the shipping community in, in almost northern part of Europe meet up here. And there is a lot of discussions going on, a lot of collaboration and, and socializing. And I think it's... It's very good for the, for the shipping network sort of to grow and grow stronger and grow together. And we feed each other many good new ideas, etc. So I think it's, it's a really good uh, opportunity here at, at Dunster Shipping Meet.